is, you know, the 240th win, which passed his legendary Hall of Fame coach, John McClendon, for second all-time wins, only behind Floyd Brown. Just can you give us your thoughts on this milestone as you reflect on the successes that you've built in this very gym? Uh, when you do something like this and you achieve something, obviously it's, it's a great stature and a, you know, incredible magnitude, but it's, it's not about me. When you're a coach, it's just about the lives that you impact. Um, and all this really means is that I've had some really good basketball players and some really good coaches and a really good university and a really good fan base that supported me um, throughout my tenure here. And matter of fact, ever since I was a 17-year-old kid, so, you know, this team and the teams in the past, you know, it's all about them. They make me look a lot better than I am. I really don't have no control. I just am confined in a box. And, you know, as far as John McClendon, you know, I may have passed him in victories, but, you know, the impact that he's had um, on the game in terms of being a pilot and a trailblazer, you know, he, he took a lot of butt movements so I didn't have to go through it, right? And so, you know, it's not even parallel to even compare me to him in, in no regard. You know, I definitely appreciate it. I'm humbled and honored, but, you know, he was coaching during the Jim Crow. He was coaching during segregations. He was coaching through, through before Brown versus Board of Education, before Civil Rights Act, before Fair Housing Act, before everything, right? And he just paved the way for coaches like me. So he endured um, the hardships, so I didn't have to go through them, and I'm definitely appreciative for him. I'm glad I had the honor you know, to meet him while he was living. And this is just as much a part of his legacy as it is mine. Coach, having played here, does it make it more special, this honor? Yeah, it does. Um, you know, I, I, I think uh, one of my players, they just dump water on him, so I probably might have a, a cold or something. Uh, but um, they said, Coach, is, is, you know, we want you to soak it in because you're one of the all-time leading scorers here, one of the all-time leading coaches. And when they said it, it just hit different. I, I had no clue about the record until I showed up today. Like somebody was like, when I walked in, they was like, man, if you win, you got 240, I'm like 240, what? And then they was telling me. I stay, I don't read articles, I, I disconnect from stuff like that, man. Um, and again, I don't want to make it about me. Um, you know, these guys played great tonight. And, you know, they've gotten me to this point my team and the teams in the past have gotten me to this point. Um, you know, it wasn't a popular hire, contrary to popular belief, right, when I was initially hired. I was a guy who all I pretty much had going was I wasn't alone, so it wasn't popular. You know, I, re I remember the day after the press conference, I had about five or six phone calls to our athletic director, Ingrid, with the McCree, and she said, I want you to go to lunch with such and such and such and such, and I was like, why? She said, I want you to go to lunch and prove to them why you deserve to be hired. And I just told her, I said, I'm not going to do that. Because the people that trust you will never, will, the people that trust you will never ask you to prove it to them. Right? And so, you know, Jesus couldn't prove everything to everyone. Right? I just got to be the best version of myself. And whoever likes it, that's fine. And whoever don't like it, that's fine. But I can't go there. I'd be going to lunch with the entire world, you know, if I just went to lunch with people that was going to criticize me or doubt me. So I've always believed in myself. And I thank her for giving me the opportunity, um, along with Bill Hayes. And now we under the guidance of Skip Perkins. And I had some tremendous chancellors. God rest his soul, son is white. Charlie Nams hired me. Um, and Chancellor Akale is, is, is incredible. So I've been blessed to not only be back at my alma mater, but just be supported by a community that supported me since I was 17 years old. So it's a little easier. They know me, right? So they can't look at this microphone or see this interview and think, you know, who is this guy back here? They've known me since I was 17 years old. So it's, that's special within itself. Do you think those guys are happy with the higher outcomes? I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. You know, um, you know, coaching is fickle. You know, so you lose a game and you're probably the worst coach ever. This changes. You know, so I'm, I'm comfortable in my own skin. You know, I've been doing this for a long time now, and you know, we've had a lot of success here. And everyone has been spoiled. You know, that's the reality. Of it. You know, we came from the transition, right? I remember we made the transition from Division Two to Division One. We were horrible. I think we won like two games. We were the worst team in the country. In our first game when I was hired, we played North Carolina. And Roy, Roy Williams, I think they was up like 25 or 30 with 
three minutes left, and I looked down the sidelines, and he pulled the starters, and I said, nah, keep them in. Because I wanted our guys to know if we Hurry. ever have any plans on ascending to that level, you know, it, it's, this is big boy basketball. You can't feel sorry for us. So I told him to keep his starters in because I wanted our guys to understand how much work we had to do to ascend to a high level.